Yay Networks. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. I am your host, Dr. Deshauna Barber. I am a former Miss USA, Army veteran, and motivational speaker. And I'm excited to welcome you back to another episode of Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. This podcast is all things self-care, self-love, and self-improvement. I went through it so you don't have to. I'm excited to share with you my continued long list of life lessons in hopes that you all will walk away from each episode feeling encouraged, inspired, and strengthened. So let's dive right in to how to let go to make room. I'll say that again. This episode is called How to Let Go to Make Room. This is going to be an interesting discussion because I just recently went through a transitionary period. And this transitionary period has been a long time coming. So as I mentioned before, I'm a full-time motivational speaker. And I've been speaking as a full-time motivational speaker for about two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks, y'all. It's only been two weeks. Um, but as a speaker as a whole, I've been speaking for about seven years. And three and a half years ago, right before COVID, my speaking career was in a decent spot. Wasn't like super booked, but wasn't not booked. <laughs> I was just like right there in the middle. And I wasn't making great money, but I wasn't making terrible money. So I was like right there in the middle. And I'm the type of person that likes to live in the safe zone. So I realized that speaking is, you know, it's okay. Every season is different. And I realized that I was missing out on that philanthropic piece of my love and my life. And giving back is something that I absolutely love doing. I love community service. I love being attached to to philanthropy focused organizations and nonprofits. And I ended up getting an email and it was for a nonprofit called Service Women's Action Network. And it was saying that they had an opening for a new president and CEO. So immediately I'm like, eh, you know, like I thought it was interesting, but in my mind, I didn't, I didn't have any nonprofit experience in terms of being a part of an actual organization. Like I volunteered before, but I haven't run a nonprofit before ever. So, but I found it to be very interesting when I saw the email because I had never received an email from this company before. And I just, mm, you know, let me just see what I'm looking at. Closed the laptop, came back the next day. It's job description, all that's like posted at the front. And I call my baby sister and I say, hey, there's this interesting position um, for a women veterans nonprofit. And they're looking for someone in the DC area, blah, blah, blah. What do you think? And she's like, you know, I think you should do it. And I said, oh my gosh, I just don't feel qualified enough. I don't have any nonprofit experience. I just, I don't know if this is something that they would even consider me for. I'm just a someone that's in the service and was Miss USA. And she's like, well, you know, you have all this, you know, experience in the government before you even won Miss USA. So let's not act like you're not qualified. And listen, that's why you need cheerleaders, everybody, because, <laughs> because people like my sister will push you to see yourself in moments when you don't see your own self. So I listened to her advice and I said, you know what? I'm just going to apply. Let's just see what happens. So I send in my resume. I apply. And I get a call back about a week later and they said, hey, you know, we'd love to have you come in for an interview. I came in for an interview. Two weeks after that, I had the job. That's the nutshell story of it all. And since then, I've been president and CEO of this amazing organization. I have quadrupled the funding over the past three and a half years for this nonprofit. I mean, this organization has the most amazing board of directors, the most amazing staff and employees. We serve a huge community of women veterans and active duty service members. And it was such a beautiful experience. And about a year ago, I started becoming overwhelmed. <laughs> and I started becoming overwhelmed because my speaking career was just 
up there. Like I am just barely able to have time to balance my speaking career and this nonprofit that I'm running. The reason why this started happening a year ago is because like I said, I became president in December, 2019. Y'all know what happened in March, 2020. COVID hit. So all of 2020, all my speaking gigs got canceled and transitioned to virtual speeches. And then in 2021, all my speeches were virtual. They were not allowing in-person speaking because they weren't like, you know, all these state mandates that you can't have a certain amount of people in one room legally, right? So conferences and in-person conferences weren't a thing in 2021. Right about summer 2022 is when I started going back to in-person speeches. So I became president of this organization right when COVID hit, when I was doing virtual speeches for two and a half years, virtual speaking. So it was easier for me to manage this nonprofit and for me to be a speaker virtually. That was so easy to balance. And then 2022 happened. And I'm gonna tell you more about 2022 right after this break. See you in a sec. Welcome back. Here's what happened in 2022, y'all. My speaking career, there are days where I have just four or five speeches a month. And if you know, as a speaker, what it feels like to hop on a plane and travel and create and write speeches and stand in front of thousands of people, it can be a lot. So doing it at that magnitude while also fundraising for an organization, while also taking care of a bunch of staff, while also keeping up to date the board of directors, like just being in a presidential position or a leadership position and an executive position at any company or nonprofit is just, it's difficult. So right about fall of 2022, I started contemplating, maybe this needs to be my last few months, but then speaking slowed down in December. And then I said, okay, well maybe I can still hang this out. And then I got a ring on my finger. <laughs> in December, which means I start wedding planning. So now I'm walking into 2023 wedding planning, motivational speaker, content creator, president of nonprofit. I can't do all of this. I can't do all of this. And right about March, I had an absolute mental breakdown. I was on my way to a speech in California and it was at a college called Riverside City College. And I gave an amazing speech. What these people had no idea of is that about an hour before I was having a panic attack in front of my assistant and my videographer in my rental car because they all fly with me to all of my speeches. And I had just this panic attack. I was overwhelmed. I was screaming. I was crying. I was upset. And I'm like, this, I am overwhelmed right now. Like actually that was February because it was a black history month event. So that was February of 2023 and I'm crying and they're trying to calm me down because, you know, I have to go and give a speech in front of, you know, a, a couple hundred students here. I need to figure out how to get myself together. And it was bad. And it was in this moment I realized just how human I am in that I can't do it all. I absolutely cannot do it all. Something has to go. And as much as I love this organization, as much as I care about the cause, I realized that for me to focus in on my brand, for me to focus in on my speaking, for me to focus in on my business, I can no longer give to this other organization. It's just, it's too much. So that leads me to what this episode is about. And it's about making space for your dreams. My dream is to become a top, level motivational speaker that's booked internationally by fortune 500 companies 
well-known author, podcaster. Like I had those dreams to build up Deshauna and I had to let go of something that I so deeply loved for something that I love more. And that's my brand. That's my content. That's my business. Like I have to let go of this amazing role that has really sustained me for the past three and a half years so that I can make room for what I am building for myself and building in terms of generational wealth and something that can be passed down. Like I have to prepare myself for that. And sometimes you have to make room by letting go of something that you love. Letting go of something that you love can come in the form of a job. It can come in the form of a person. It can come in the form of where you're living, a city, a home. It can come in the form of a specific mindset that I currently have and I need to adjust my mindset to make room for this newfound goal that I have. Letting go of space comes in different forms. You have to decide for your life what form you're talking about. My form was specifically a job. I had to let go of a job. For some of you, there's some people you need to let go. <laughs> there's a job you need to let go. There's a town or a city you need to let go. <laughs> there's a mindset you need to let go. There is a trauma you need to let go. Some of us are walking around and within our lives, there is something occupying too much space and it does not leave space for something else that we are building. We have to look at our life and our environment and say, is there something in here that's taking up too much room? And oftentimes there can be. It, with, with every level that we elevate to, oftentimes you have to make room for that elevation or you're just going to overwhelm yourself and you are going to become a level of exhaustion that you can't recover from. This, my plate got so full that it started affecting my mental health. My, my mental health was shattered earlier this year, just a few months ago, it was destroyed. And it's crazy because usually when you have like a mental health crisis or you have like a mental breakdown, it's because everything's going wrong. The crazy part about this is that everything was actually going great. The organization was great. My speeches were going great. I'm preparing to get married. You know, like, why is everything? And it was almost as if I became very, I didn't feel regret, but I almost felt ashamed that I could be having a mental breakdown at a point in my life where everything is absolutely going as I had dreamed it would go. It was this shame that I felt that why am I complaining? I have a husband, I have a great speaking career, I have a nonprofit that I'm running and it's going successfully, my content, my social media, like everything is going great, I'm healthy, why am I having a mental breakdown? We have to consider the fact that being overwhelmed is being overwhelmed. Whether it's with good stuff or with bad stuff, when you're overwhelmed with too much stuff, that's a bad thing, it just is. And you have to make room and space for the things that you wanna to build towards. You just have to. So I took about a week after that mental breakdown, I just coincidentally had a board meeting two weeks after that. And I got on my board of directors meeting and I let the board know that I'm submitting my, resi my resignation. I got on this board of directors meeting and I submitted my resignation and I cried. <laughs> I felt so emotional and I kept telling the board that I don't want to do this, but I just can't handle it all anymore. And they were all so understanding and they were so grateful for the three and a half years that I spent at this organization and it was, a great three and a half years. I mean, truly. And I love it so much that I ended up transitioning to the board of directors. So I'm not completely disconnected from this organization. I'm now on the board, but I'm just no longer in a um, employment position at this organization. Now I'm just at an advisory level. And 
I've made the right decision because what's crazy is that this has been the happiest two weeks that I've felt all year. And this is the happiest I've been because my plate is lighter. The weight on my shoulders is lighter. The pressure is lighter. And it's because of these two weeks that I know that I made the right decision. And I love that about how I'm feeling. And if there's anybody, I'm saying and a thousand times, but if there's anybody out there that's feeling overwhelmed, this is specific to you. Anyone that's feeling overwhelmed, one, or for anyone that's in the process of moving to the next level or elevating themselves, I want you to look at your environment, look at your space, look at your life and look at your plate and ask yourself, am I feeling overwhelmed because there's something in here that I have to let go? Sometimes you grow out of things. Sometimes you sprout into other things. Sometimes you reach new levels. That is a natural process of life. Where we go wrong as human beings is we try to hold on to things that we should have let go a long time ago. And it's because it could be something that we love. It could be someone that we love. It could be a city that we love. But for us to elevate and continue to move along in our journey of life, we have to know when to let go. And I've been terrible at letting go of things. I am a person that is absolutely, when I'm committed to something, I'm committed. I give my all to it. It's very hard to let go of something for me. But I realize that it's not healthy to hold on to things forever. Sometimes you have to let it go so that you can make space for the other things that you're building. I'm going to give you all one last tip right after this break. See you in a sec. Welcome back. All right, let's close out with our final tip on how do you determine what to let go? You determine what to let go based on what does contribute to you the most. What contributes to your brand the most? What contributes to your business the most? Sometimes we're building up something else that does not ultimately contribute to us as individuals, and that's fine, but you have to create a hierarchy of importance. And what should always be most important is what builds you as an individual, not anything else. So I had to let go of this role in this position because it was the thing on my plate that builds Deshauna up the least. My speaking career builds my brand, it builds my business, so does my social media, so does my content creation, so does the book that I'm writing, so does this podcast. Like it builds Deshauna Barber as an individual. And that's why I prioritized all those things over the previous position but I still can't deny that I love this position and I love what it does and I love the cause. Therefore, you can transition into a different type of position that still fulfills you in that way, but does not require as much. So my point is that when you are in the middle of making space, realize that it doesn't mean completely getting rid of something that you might be passionate about, something that you might love. Maybe you just need to shift the way in which you support this, the way in which you operate and not lose sight of your love for your different positions in life. Like I have a love for veterans. I have a love for service members. I have a love for giving back. So instead of completely exiting myself from this position, I shifted the way in which I operate in this role. And I'm still able to fill up that philanthropic cup that I love so much while being able to take so much time back and being able to invest into my brand and into the other businesses and things that I'm doing in my life. So in conclusion, we need to make space. Look at your plate. Are you overwhelmed? What can be sacrificed? What can be moved? What can be shifted? Let's think about that. And if you have recently made a shift, made a change, did some reorganizing of your plate, send me a DM, let me know. I would love to hear about it. Thank you so much, friends. Be sure to subscribe, like, 
share, leave a review. Let me know what you think. Send me a DM. Let me know about your shift. And I will see you in the next episode. Yay Networks.